Our ancestors were hunters, gatherers, and foragers. Our brains are hardwired to have a stimulus and a reward every time we find food in the wild that we can eat. A little side effect of supermarkets and an industrialized society is that we no longer have to hunt and forage and gather our food, we can just go buy it. And so that little piece of our brain has been turned off. Thankfully, however, it's actually really easy to turn that piece of our brain back on. And really the only thing that we have to do is start looking. A year ago, I could have looked at this canopy and seen nothing but a whole bunch of leaves. But because I'm interested in woodworking and plant life ecology and also very interested in finding some dang chanterelle mushrooms and some pawpaws here in Tennessee, I've started learning about the things around me. I've started using plant identifier apps and I've basically taken more walks in the woods when I'm looking around. And as such, I've learned how to find all kinds of stuff like this little mushroom that was literally just sitting right there. Think about, for example, the last time that you were shopping for or hunting for something. Oh, good night, these orb weavers are everywhere. Maybe it was a new outfit or a new purse or a new car. I would venture to guess that as you were looking for that new purse or car, you all of a sudden started seeing those everywhere. Now, does that mean that all of a sudden there was a whole bunch of those things everywhere you looked? No, it's just that we have to process so much incoming information all the time that our brains have learned to filter out what's important and what's not important. And by studying some specific topic, it suddenly lets our brain know that, hey, this is important. And we start to see it everywhere. Like just walking through the woods, I now no longer see a whole sea of brown when I look down at the leaves. I see all kinds of different mushrooms and of a whole lot of different varieties too. I mean, just look at, around me here. There's some here, there's some here. The forest floor has always been covered with this variety of mushrooms and acorns and, you know, different decomposing leaves and other detritus, but I wasn't looking for them. So naturally I didn't see them. I had never even heard of a pawpaw before I moved south, but as soon as I did, I became obsessed. First, the thought of growing a tropical fruit somewhere that it snows in the winter time seemed pretty impossible. But second, because from everything that I was reading online, pawpaws sounded like a combination of three fruits that I grew up eating in Asia. Something called a soursop, mangoes, and you've probably heard of bananas. I had seen dozens and dozens of pictures of pawpaw leaves, but I didn't know how to actually look for them and find them in the wild. But as soon as I found my first pawpaw tree, I started to see them everywhere. Oh my gosh, there's spiders everywhere too. It's been two years and I haven't found any actual pawpaw fruit yet, mostly because, you know, I had only seen pictures online. And when you're looking at pictures, it's really hard to discern this from all of that. And also because, you know, I wasn't sure that pawpaws grew here. I wasn't sure what season they were actually ripe here in Tennessee. I didn't know anything about how the tree started forming the fruit or really much of anything else. I have two tools I'm bringing with me, a fruit picker with an extending arm and harvest basket because we have hopeful thoughts. Well, right off the bat, we are in luck, my friends. Look up there. What do we have here? That, my friend, looks like some pawpaws ripe for the taking, and there's a couple clusters of them. Check it out. Okay, we gotta go find the other ones that I dropped. Even on the forest floor, now that we know what we're looking for, it's a lot easier to find it. See it? There's one. There's another one down in the creek bed, but we've got an orb weaver right in the way, so I gotta find a way around it. Where are you, Mr. Orb Weaver? Oh, there you are. Ah, yeah. Well, 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 look what Mr. Orb Weaver has made his web upon. Nothing but a little pawpaw tree. I think we might have to pull that up and bring it home with us. And here is the other lost pawpaw. Okay. First, smells. I don't think that these are actually ripe yet. We might need to put these on the counter and hopefully they get ripe on the counter, but I'm not sure if they will. I mean, obviously 
Most fruits taste better if they're ripened on the actual tree. Um, but I have just plucked these from the tree, so. Well, if the pawpaws are not ripe, then I think we should still go and look around and see what we might find to fill our harvest basket. Oh my gosh, a red chanterelle. I've never seen one of these in the wild. I just found a little friend who's pointing me towards some chanterelles. What a good guy. Little box turtle. We won't disturb him. Eee, here's some more chanterelles. Ooh, we're really gonna fill up this basket. There are tons of edible mushrooms in the forest, but if you are going to eat them, you want to be really, really confident what it is that you're eating. So pick up a guidebook, or better yet, have a friend who knows what they're doing show you a thing or two. Well, hello, friend. You look almost like a chanterelle yourself. So here's something super fun. This tree is absolutely covered in wood ear mushrooms. Wood ear mushrooms are called wood ear mushrooms because they look like little ears. And generally speaking, any kind of mushroom or fungal growth on a tree is signs that the tree is struggling and or decaying. And here is where all of this ties together. I was looking for pawpaws because of their connection to other fruits that I grew up eating in Asia. Wood ear mushrooms, incidentally, are also a very commonly used mushroom in a lot of Asian dishes, especially in Taiwan, where they're often used for soups and in dumplings. So far, I've found nearly 30 species of mushrooms right in these woods. I've found figs, chestnuts, walnuts, pecans, wild raspberries, blackberries, wild grapes, all kinds of other things, and I've kept a log of them that you can find on my Squarespace website. If you're interested in learning about foraging right alongside me, head on over to anofalltrades.com and while you're there, sign up for my newsletter. I will send you weekly updates with free information and tips and tricks about all kinds of things related to homesteading and the self-sufficient lifestyle. That's all kinds of different topics like woodworking and blacksmithing and gardening and canning and preserving and animal husbandry. You can find it all there. I've been using Squarespace to host my blog and collect the things that I've been learning for the last eight years. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of stuff to find there. Squarespace is a fantastic platform for busy people like me, who also happen to not be very tech savvy, who have things that they want to share with the world. It gives us beautiful artist design templates that we can simply drag and drop whatever information we want to share into and then share it with the world. If you want to start your own blog or photo gallery or online store, check out Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trades for a 10% discount. Brittany, you're from the South. Did, did someone say Paw Paw? Well, they did, but you're too short. This is Brittany. Hello, Hi. Brittany. Hello. Let's get you a chair. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Paw Paw that I found a while ago. It's been reckoning on my counter for the last couple of weeks. You basically rip them open like you're a bear. Could I cut it? You could. So that we can look at it? Yeah. But the, the, the actually the skin is it has toxins in it. So do oh, like not mangoes? Bite into it, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, and, like se and, and the seeds too. So don't eat the seeds. Oh, well actually as it turns out it's actually kind of surprisingly hard to cut it. Oh, wait. It looks like a mango inside. You know, I was noticing the leaves of the pawpaw tree actually look like mangoes. Well, that's not working. So I'm going to just, um, yeah, that's as, what I said. As your open. advice was for with Claws. such as, oh, oh wait, <laughs> what is it not good? No, I mean, but these are the seeds. They're enormous. Well, that would make sense why it was so hard. Check this out. This, this little guy might've come off the tree a little early. Well, I was very excited to pick it, Brittany. I feel like you're, <laughs> doesn't bode Left. well for all of the ones that I picked that are over there. <laughs> oh, Anne. 